Hi Tilly, I hope you're well. Today I'm going to show you some behind the scene of my latest photo shoot for the miniature treehouse. I'm going to show the equipment that I've used, how I set it up to achieve those images. I hope you enjoy it. So I set up my equipment for my photo shoot the same way I installed it when I shoot a stop motion animation. I like to have my camera connected to my computer with the Dragon Frame software installed on it. I like to have the monitor on the chair on top of the table so it reach eye level and I find it much more comfortable and easy to use that way. So I have a good view of the monitor and I can compose my picture better. Now, as you can see, I've put lots of components to create this whole set because initially my set looked like this, so it's a bit bare around it. I've reused some trees and part of the miniature set that I previously created for the cottage. I don't know if you've seen the other tutorial. I've also used the background, so I steal all those elements from the previous set and then I start playing with the light. There's not just one way of creating the lighting for a shoot, that's just one that I liked that day. To create this image, I've used different kind of lighting equipment and I'm gonna go through them one by one. The most important lighting that I use is the one from above, as you can see here, to create the sunshine. And it's one of the most precious lighting equipment that I have. It's an Aperture 60X. I use it all the time. It's the first light that I begin with when I compose the lighting setup. It's a precious piece of equipment that is beautifully designed and engineered. So I've got my main light from above. Then I use some smaller light on either side. Sometimes you just need to have a little bit of light to separate the main central subject from the background. And for that, I use those Aperture MC, which are absolutely brilliant. By the way, I'm not sponsored by any company. So all the equipment that you see me using is the one that I pay full price for and that I use because I think it's good for the job. I'm not paid for talking about them. This Aperture MC is absolutely fantastic. It's very small, so you can get in there very easily for miniature set design, it's perfect. They are connected on the app, so I can adjust everything from the intensity, the color, uh, directly from my phone. The previous light, the Aperture 60X that I mentioned earlier, is also something that I can control from my phone. And I like to use those tiny tripod or Gorilla Pod. Uh, they are very practical for miniature set design. Even though the back of the Aperture MC is magnetic, so technically you can attach it to a metal pole, I did the mistake of relying on this magnetic part in the past, and as I was walking by, I knocked off the light and it up on the floor, broken. So from now on, I use those Gorilla Pod and attach it and wrap it all around the pole, just to make sure that it's extra safe and hold in there. So to recap, I've got the top lighting, Aperture 60X, I've got the small Aperture MC on either side, and then I have some other light that I use to bounce on the ceiling, for example, to send back some light from the top, or another one with the diffuser on top. Those are GVM 800D, they are part of the initial kits of 3 LED light that I bought when I started photography, and I still use them today, they're really good. Now be able to see those images directly on the monitor makes a huge difference in the composition and also to make sure every time that the image is absolutely sharp. I like to use my little remote with the Dragon Frame software because it's really convenient. I can see the image in full on my monitor means I can spot when suddenly there's a part of the sky or the background that show off. So in that case, I've used some background uh, boards to make sure I feel the image. Otherwise you see my workshop at the back and I can easily go through the images and make my selection. Once I was happy with this setup and the white shot, I start to move around, move my equipment. The camera I'm using for all my shoot is a Canon EOS RP. The lens I've got on it is a 2400 which I use for most of my shots. Now, once I was done with all the outside picture, I decided to tackle the interior. For that, I removed the back of the set. And if you've seen my tutorial, you know that I've design and build this major set in two different components. So I very carefully and gently remove the back, reposition my house against the tree, switch on the lights, and then I got in there with my camera. And I can see straight away that I'm gonna have some issue to get the right shots. I start playing around with the equipment, make sure the lighting was coming from the right direction, play around with my main Aperture 60X to make sure it was coming from the right angle. I mean, 
Yes, I could achieve some pictures, but I was not too impressed. I started changing lenses. I've got another one which is 70 200. It was a bit better, but it was still so limited in terms of what I can reach because of the access, so I knew I needed to bring the big boy. And by that, I mean a very special lens. Ta -da! I think everything sounds much more impressive if you do ta -da before. This is a very special Laowa 24mm macro probe lens. It looks completely different and it does achieve incredible images. I heard about it the first time when I see the documentary The Green Planet from David Attenborough, which by the way, if you've not seen, I really recommend. It's absolutely gorgeous. And those images were achieved because of this special lens, which not only is a macro lens, but it offers a wide shot. In a way, it gives you a bug eye perspective. But what makes it different to other macro lens is usually when you take a shot, you have a sharp subject in the middle and the rest is blurry around it. This works a bit differently where not only the subject, but everything around it is much sharper and visible. So for me, who is really interested in set design, this is exactly the kind of lens that I thought would be appropriate for my shoot. And I'm so glad I've invested into it. If you buy it brand new, it would be like 1700 pounds but I found mine secondhand online and I'm so glad because it was a great deal. Otherwise you can rent it. For example, I'm close to London and I found at least three different companies that can rent it per day or per week. So it could be really, really useful if you just want to give it a shot for once. So I started setting up my lens and I realized just the biggest challenge of all when you work with this lens is the lighting because it's got such a tiny lens in the long tube, as you can see here, that there's a very small amount of light coming in it. The maximum aperture is f14. That might not mean a lot to everyone, but that basically means there's very little light coming through. So you have to compensate by using basically all the lighting equipment you can find to just burst as much light as possible in there. They do have an LED included into the lens. So I have a little cable, I plug that in and it helped bring lots of light to my set. But as you can see, on this shoot, it was overexposed. I didn't really like the way that the light was coming from the camera instead of coming from the window, which will make it more realistic. So I decided to turn this one off, remove this cable and start to play with every single lighting equipment I've got and bring light through the window from every direction I could possibly manage. So I've got my two GVM 800D full blast from above. I've got the aperture 60X on the side and then I use a smaller Aperture MC and as you can see, I've installed it directly on the roof and that was so, so important to get enough light through. And that gave me a much more pleasing image. It's the first time that I was able to use this lens and I'm so happy that I've invested into it because I will not be able to achieve those images. It will simply not have been technically possible to get in there and to move around and get all those angles, all those shots without having this specific lens. So once I was happy with those shots, I positioned back the wall of the house and then turn it around. I wanted to take other shots from the door. And once again, the door is a very, very tight area. I would not have been able to put a normal lens through that. So I was so pleased to see what I was able to reach and turning the camera around to get all those angles. I was just really happy with it. The other way I've achieved some of the shot is by removing the roof and shot it from above. If you do those kind of shots, it's better if you have a C stand to hold the camera in position. And the last thing I want to share is you've probably seen those pictures that I really enjoy with all my set when I have my hands coming inside of it. To take those pictures, considering my hands are kind of busy in there, the way I'm doing it is actually by having a pencil in my mouth and my little remote from the Dragon Frame software try to get my hands in the right position by looking at the monitor and then with my pencil try to reach the right button. So this is how I do all my shots. So next time you see some of my pictures with my hands inside of my set, think about me with my pencil, try to reach the right button on my remote. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this behind the scene. I'm not sure yet what's going to be my next video because I haven't defined yet what's going to be my next project. So. In the meantime, I hope you're going to be okay and I hope you're going to be kind and patient towards yourself. So take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.